David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have a pen from Pilot, and it's a pen that a lot of folks consider to be the, the flagship pen for the brand, and that is the Pilot 823. I'm going to go over the uh, parts and the features of the 823, talk about what I care for, what I don't care for, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Um, to begin with, I, I went to the dermatologist this week and they took care of a little uh, dry patch of skin I have. So I have a little mark here. So I wanted to get, uh, I didn't want to wait to get this review as well as my next top 10 list uh, out. And so uh, I didn't feel like waiting for it to heal up. So I hope it's not too much of a distraction there. But my pen arrived in this rather no frills box. Um, once you get up to the Pilot Namiki line, I believe the boxes are a little bit nicer, but uh, I, you know, I really don't mind in this case. It's a, a little plastic box uh, because I'm more focused on what's inside the box. And in this case uh, of the 823, uh, what's in the box is pretty cool. Uh, actually, inside we have a, uh, a use and care guide. Uh, Pilot categorizes the 823 as a, uh, I don't know if you could see it, a Type P uh, fountain pen with the P standing for pump because the 823 has a pump or a vacuum filling system. And here is the pen. This is the Pilot 823 in the amber finish. Um, I believe this translucent amber version is the only one currently available to U.S. distributors, uh, but there are two additional models. There is a smoke gray as well as a clear one, which I, I believe are only available either in the Japanese market or can be found through overseas retailers or on sites like eBay or Amazon. Uh, the, the 823 has a classic cigar shape. You know, I typically prefer silver colored trim over gold. But I feel that this gold-plated trim really complements the smoky, transparent, amber uh, acrylic resin. Now, the smoke gray and clear versions also have gold trim, but I kind of personally feel that those would look better with silver-colored trim rather than gold. So uh, let's start at the cap. Uh, the end of the cap is rounded and is actually a solid, uh, non-translucent brown. Uh, then we have the band, which uh, actually right here, which is a raised and uh, has a raised and rounded ring in the middle of it. Uh, then we have the clip, and the clip is stamped with pilot. You know, I like the elongated V shaped of the clip, but you know, I can't say I'm a huge fan of the uh, pilot's oversized ball at the end of the clip. Uh, and this particular clip is extremely stiff and at times can be a little bit tough to get into a shirt pocket. Um, the cap actually angles up slightly to a, a very thin cap band just offset from the larger main cap band. Um, the band has some stars and says custom 823 and pilot and made in Japan. Uh, I like that the stamp lettering is filled with what looks to be like black lacquer or paint. Uh, here's some microscope pictures of the, the filled lettering. Um, you know, you never realize how dirty or scratched up your pen is until you look at it under a microscope. It really looks terrible, but to the naked eye, it, it seems just fine. Um, then we have an angled step down to the barrel, which is straight. Then we have a, uh, another band with a raised rounded ring in the middle. And then we have the knob at the end, which again is a solid brown to match the end of the cap. And it operates the vacuum filling system, which we'll take a look at here in a bit. The cap twists off to reveal this very nice gold colored size 15, 14 karat gold nib. Um, I really enjoy Pilot's gold nibs a great deal, and, and I like the size of this number 15 nib. Uh, it has some really nice scroll work. Then it says Pilot, 14K, 585, and then 15 for the nib size, and M for medium. Uh, you know, it's something small, but I like how on uh, Pilot's nibs that they have the angle brackets on either side of the M. I don't know, I just like that. Uh, then on the base of the nib, it's actually stamped with uh, 1115, which I believe indicates that this nib was manufactured in November of 2015. Now, I purchased this pen in mid-January of 2016, so it was still nice and fresh when I received it. Uh, and here's a look at the plastic feed. The section actually matches the solid dark brown of the ends and is just slightly flared at the end. It angles up 
uh, just a little bit. And then there is a thin gold band right before a, uh, a minimal angled step up to the threads. Uh, this is a section which I feel is very comfortable to use. Uh, it feels very nice in the hand. And while the 823 is plenty long enough to use unposted, the cap does post securely and doesn't really significantly throw off the balance of the pen. Uh, that, you know, I feel you could use this pen either posted or unposted with no issues. Uh, the 823 has a vacuum filling system which holds a significant amount of ink. You really can't see in here with the uh, translucent color, uh, but on a good fill, you can get in excess of two milliliters of ink into this pen. Um, this is a system similar to that of the Twisby Vac 700, uh, as well as Visconti's power fillers. Um, it's a bit tough to see through the amber, like I said, but there's a, a rod which is connected to uh, the knob, and at the end of the rod, there's a plunger-like piece of rubber. Um, when the knob is completely closed, uh, this seals off the ink from uh, from the barrel flowing into the section, and uh, this could be helpful if you're ever in an airplane where the change in cabin pressure can have a tendency to expel ink. In my experience, fountain pens really aren't the best thing to use on a plane. I've had some bad experiences where they just don't work right. It doesn't like the change in air pressure. They can be a little bit temperamental. Uh, to ink the pen, you untwist the knob at the end of the barrel, and at this point right here, uh, the knob is now separated from the barrel. It's off of those threads. Um, and now when you're writing, uh, you want to leave the knob unscrewed like this, but not pulled out so the ink can flow freely from the barrel to the section. Um, in order to fill the pen, you would pull back this knob in order to pull the plunger back. You place the nib in your ink, and then as you press the rod back down, it creates a low pressure vacuum behind the plunger. And at a certain point, the inside of the barrel expands a little bit, and when the plunger passes that point, it no longer creates that seal. And then what happens is all the air will want to rush in to fill the vacuum, and it brings your ink along with it. Um, and if you want to see an example of uh, inking up a vacuum filler, then check out my Twisby Vac 700 review from just a couple of weeks ago. I demonstrate on that video. Uh, and since the Vac 700 is clear, you can get a better look of what's exactly going on inside the pen. I also give a couple of tips in regard to how to get the best fill possible with the vacuum cleaner. Um, I really like vacuum cleaners. For me, uh, vacuum cleaners, vacuum fillers, excuse me. Uh, for me, they're more fun to fill than a pen with a, a piston or a converter. Uh, plus, they generally hold a ton of ink. A, a vacuum filling system uh, is rather difficult to clean. You can flush out a good deal of the ink, but sometimes it's rather difficult to get all the ink residue uh, out of here, which has the tendency to kind of gather around the seal uh, and in the silicone grease. So if you have a favorite ink, it might be good to kind of always pair it up to that, uh, unless you want to change out inks and clean it out a little more often. Um, most of the time, when you purchase a fountain pen, it'll write just fine out of the box. And some of the time, you might need to make some minor adjustments, like aligning the tines of the nib or smoothing it out a bit with some micro mesh. And while that's not ideal, that's to be expected from time to time. Uh, and then there's other times when you receive a pen that just doesn't quite work right, no matter what you do. Uh, and it needs more expert attention in order to get it to perform properly. Um, now, there's a difference between a pen that's broken, where a warranty would come into play, and one that just simply underperforms, which is exactly what happened to me with this Pilot 823. The ink flow was just never where I wanted it to be. Uh, the feed just couldn't keep up, keep up with uh, quick side strokes and fast riding, and there was a good deal of hard starts and, and skipping as well. Uh, there were times when it would perform just fine and other times when it would hardly write at all. So at two different pen shows, I actually had two different reputable folks attempt to work on this pen to increase the ink flow better and uh, increase its performance. And both of them did not succeed, unfortunately. Uh, the pen would work okay for a little while, but then go back to its inconsistent ways. So I sent this pen off to Mike Matsuyama. And while Mike's turnaround time is a little uh, lengthy, uh, when I received the pen back after a couple of months, the difference was night and day. Uh, the ink flow is perfect. And the general tuning that he did, as well as uh, to the nib, as well as uh, just really, really made this pen come alive. Um, he did a fantastic job. Um, I'm already getting ready to send him two other pens. Uh, it was well worth the wait and worth the investment, especially on a pen like the Pilot 823 to get it performing as it should be. So I really, really like this now.
Um, for US-based retailers, the Pilot 823 has a, a list price of $360, which means you'll find it on sale for about 20% less, which is $288. And um, that price is pretty consistent across all major retailers uh, in the US. Of course, there's always deals to be had on alternative outlets, but I feel uh, that the look and the feel and performance of the 823 justifies the price. Um, and the moniker of being a flagship pen, even though uh, my specific pen had some issues, that I wouldn't hold that against uh, the pen as a whole. So there you have the Pilot 823. So now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Pilot Custom Heritage 823. Um, to start off with, uh, this is what it looks like with a Mont Blanc 149. Then here it is with a Pelican M1000. And then here it is with the brand new acquisition that just arrived yesterday, uh, which is a Sailor King of Pens Pro Gear. Um, we'll have to definitely be taking a look at that pen in a little bit. Then in regard to some other pens, we have it here with a Pilot Stella 90S, then a Twisby Diamond 580, uh, and then here it is with a Lamy All-Star. If I can fit them all in the frame there. That's not necessarily aligned, but good enough for right now. So here we go with the Pilot, and this is the Custom Heritage 823. This is a medium 14 karat nib, uh, and the ink that we're using today is Mont Blanc. And this is Toffee Brown. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, the, uh, the Mont Blanc bottles are very functional. Uh, I like them a lot. And this is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a decent ink, uh, brown ink. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to like the Faber-Castell hazelnut brown, which is fairly similar. Uh, and then you have something like the SBRE Brown, which is a little bit on the lighter side. Uh, you know, I still do really like that SBRE Brown ink. If you could find some, that I, I highly recommend it. I, I do like it. I'll be sad when that ink is gone. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, that the nib work that Mike Matsuyama was able to do on here is amazing. Um, this is my, it might be one of my more favorite nibs in my entire collection right now. Um, that you can push it and get a bit of line variance out of here, um, but it's smooth with having a bit of feedback uh, and, and it feels very soft on the paper. And the ink flow is just perfect on here, nice and juicy. In regard to reverse writing, it can be done. It is a little bit on the sharp side, but in regard to some fast writing where this pen was really having issues before, there is no issue whatsoever. Um, that the Pilot, Custom Heritage 823. It is a very distinct pen from a solid brand, uh, which has a great deal, deal of character. Um, it's a pen that I really enjoy uh, and that uh, it's one that I would highly recommend picking up. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later.